Okay, so this is the original one. And I did this a long time ago, and I went to I said, oh, we can do it again. But I couldn't find the files. Okay, that's one thing. The other thing is that my husband complained about this one because it's too short, too small for his hands. But the problem is, is his hands would get burned. Top and bottom fingers would get burned. So I had to redigitize it because I couldn't find it. It's probably in my file somewhere, but you know, I, I couldn't find it. So I did another one and I made this one bigger. It's a little wider and it covers his whole hand and he won't be able to complain about it. So I did it several, I did it this way and you have a design. I did actually four versions of this for you guys and it'll be in the handouts. One will have no quilting. And why I put the quilting there is because when I stitched this, and I I have polyester fabric, and I'm not going to use it for anything, so I'll use it for these samples. A lot of times it's this nasty Pepto-Bismol pink stuff. So, But it polyester is very tightly woven, and it'd be the same as a batik. It puckered like there was no tomorrow. And I did all kinds of things to prevent this from puckering up, and it did it anyway. So I said, oh, heck with it. So after it was all done, I free motion quilted it. This one is quilted on the back. So I did another version of the in the hoop where this would be quilted. It'll be quilted up underneath of the design. Won't be quilted on the back, but that's okay. It's, it's fine. So uh, there's, there is this one where it says good morning with the coffee cup. I have just the coffee cup for you if you wanted to put it on other designs. I have one with quilting, one without quilting. And then I have a blank one which doesn't have anything in here. And you can add what you want. One is blank with no quilting. The other one has got quilting with it. Also in this month's handout, if you didn't get the um, the instructions or the um, or the or the design downloaded from the newsletter. I've got that for you. Okay, so let's get started. For this project, you're going to need two rectangles of fabric about four and a half inches by 11. Okay, if it's flimsier fabric, and even if it isn't. I like to use Decker Bond. So um, I will use a heavy fusible interfacing on one of the pieces to give it, and, and this is going to be the lining piece. It helps to give it a little bit more body. If you are not using the, if not using the quilted version, I'd re probably recommend taking both pieces and putting deco bond on them just to keep it from puckering. I hate puckering. Hate it, hate it, hate it. But there was nothing, it was the right stabilizer. I tried everything, it still puckered, and I just determined, and I used, uh, Terial magic on it to make it stiffer didn't help. <laughs> it still puckered. Um, and it could be the humidity, I don't know. So anyway, so you want to use one rectangle of batting. Where did I put my batting? Here it is. Uh, this is oversized, but it's going to be... Uh, did I cut it big? Yeah, I did. Uh, it's going to be four and a half inches by 11 also. You're going to need at least a six by 10 hoop or the 10 and a quarter. I'm using my seven by 11 one. You'll need an empty bobbin so you can wind the color because you want the front and the back on the outside to be the same. Okay, so um, that's what you do there. And then you need regular embroidery bobbin thread. And then if you're going to do that design, you can, uh, I suggested brown, green, light gray, medium gray, and black is what I used. First thing you're going to do is you're going to hoop your stabilizer. And you want to use a no-show mesh. No, 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 no. Duh. Dissolve away mesh. Because I want it to, why I'm using that instead of anything else is because if I cut it out when it's done and you've got the no-show mesh, you're going to see the edge, which I use no-show mesh. I don't know if you can see it on this one, because we didn't have dissolve away when I did that. And see how you can see that white line on the edge? It doesn't completely go away, because you had to cut it away. I tried using a melting burner thing, you know. Uh, actually, what I use as my burner is the, the Bedazzler hot 
hot crystal pl applica uh, applicator that works really well. Okay, so let's go to the machine. I think uh, you can use either batting or insel brights too, depending on how sensitive you are. I just use batting because I, well, A, I don't drink coffee, so I don't care. <laughs> Just my husband who does it. Okay, let's go to the machine. Want, I'm going to load the blank one on here because I want to add something to it. Okay, so I'm going to pick the design off the stick. There we go, and it wants to turn it, so that's fine. Turning it's okay. I want to put, say, initials in here. And we're going to talk about how come sometimes initials cause problems. Set. Okay, I'm going to add. And you could add whatever design you like in there. So I'm going to add some text. And let's see, what font do I want? Mm, this one, plain. It's a little more plain. So G, F, 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 and V. Okay, set. Alrighty, I made them all big, and I think if I rotate it, it's going to be okay. Okay, but, yep. Yeah, see, I'm not crazy about how that looks. No, I'll rotate it back, and I want to play with it. Okay, so I want to edit it. And I want to go into, on this machine, I want to do letter edit. This you can't do. I don't, well, I'm going to do it this way, and then I'm going to do it again, because not everybody has letter editing on their machine. So here we go. I'm going to select the F. So I hit this select button until the box is around the F, and I want to make it bigger. Okay. The only problem with this, I'll make it even bigger, okay, is it's bigger, but it's, these are not in alignment like I like at all. And if I turn it, it looks even worse. Even if I rotate it a tiny bit. Well, that makes it better, but I still don't like it. Why? Because that F is sitting above the others, so I don't like it. Unfortunately, the only way that I can get that to to uh, to work, I'm going to add and G, F, and V set, and I want to go here and split. Well, let me rotate it first, then I'll split it. Okay, and then I will hit it, split, cut, okay, this split all, split them apart, I did it twice, so what I did is I brought it in and the knife was between the two, now I can manipulate each and every one separately, so as I go to select, I can, let me do the F first. I'm going to do the F because I want that bigger. So I'm going to go to size and make it bigger. And I can position it. So yes, you can you can make you can manipulate each letter. However, then you have to split them in order to do so. Okay, and then okay, and then next. I will move that one. And then select the other one. See the little box around the G, so that means that's the active one. So now I can move that. And you know what? I think I'm going to rotate these a little bit. So I will rotate that just a tiny bit. Maybe one or two degrees just to follow the curve. And I will rotate that one a couple of degrees just to follow the curve. Okay, I kind of like the way that one looks. Okay, and so that one's ready to stitch. And I like the way that one looks, so I'm going to put it in memory. In memory, so I'll come back to this later. Okay, so 
Let's go back to delete, delete, delete. Okay, and I'm going to now show you how to do this if you did not have uh, any type of, you know, not the ability to edit and change the fonts. It doesn't have this extra font, this letter edit. What I'm looking for is font type, letter edit, letter edit, the split, and the font type. If your machine doesn't have those buttons, you have to do it this old-fashioned way. Okay, so what I would do is I would go to my ad, and they pretty much all have ad, and I would bring in, the, you have to bring in one letter at a time. So I would probably bring in that F first and set it. Okay, so then I have to change that letter and rotate it 90 degrees and size it up. Hello, Lily. Somebody's under sea legs. <laughs> She's meowing. Okay, that's, and then I'll position that where I want it. Okay, okay, then you have to add each letter separately. I'm not, no. Now you're stuck, aren't you? I'll move it out of the way. And I'm going to rotate it. And maybe a little bit less. And I want to size it. Make it a little smaller. Oh, actually, I like this one better. Oh. Great. <laughs> Back in the middle. <laughs> Moved the wrong thing, didn't I? Okay, and then I would add the third one and the V. Same letter and a V. And rotate it. And move it. And I want to size it. It's too big. I want it about the same size as that one. And if I'm not sure, I'll move it up next to it so I can at least be a little smaller. Okay. And then move it down. Okay, I like that one. So I'm just going to leave those like that. And maybe a little smaller. More. Yep, that's better. Okay, and that when I get it looking like I want it, then I'll go ahead and stitch it. So I'll hit OK, go to embroidery. It's now ready to stitch. Okay, so the first thing it's showing you is that we're going to do, let's see if we can quickly stitch this out. Now, once, one thing I want to show, now that I'm in, in regular embroidery, as I hit edit, and I move, now I am moving the whole design. See how now the whole thing moves? Eh, I'll leave it there. There. Okay. And so now the first thing it does is we are going to lower. Do I have red in there? Yes, I do. And so we're going to put the placement on for the batting. There we go. This is going to give me the placement for the out for the just the design. I'm using blue because that's what I'm gonna finish it at. Okay. The second step. I'm going to put the batting down. So that it covers all the stitching. And I'm just going to hold it. Usually I will hold it, put my fingers where I know it's going to go. And I know this is going to come this way. So it stays straight. I'm holding it in the opposite corner so it won't shift. It's all good.
next thing I'm going to do is take this out where those curved scissors go. I like to use curved scissors to trim. And you want I'm trimming my batting first. Mostly be so it'll give it a nice clean edge. Because if you wait and trim this batting at the end, you end up with it making it hard to pull out. And you see it. I could do a lot closer than this, but I don't worry about it. This is mine anyway. Be careful not to cut the uh, stabilizer. I've done that many a time too. Okay. Okay, then the next part I am going to Put, I'm going to change the thread to that peach color. And that right now I just have regular embroidery bobbin thread in the bobbin. I'm not using the special one or the one that I have wound. going to put down my piece of fabric and in this one this one's going to be and you want to make sure that that is covering all of the stitching first okay <laughs> what this one does is it stipples and I got fixed something because I want it to not do that so I want it to it'll stipple plus it will it will do the edging so while that's stitching let's start talking about this let's go here I got I knew something was off Okay, <laughs> in the design, my original, this is the original design. After you have stitched color step number three on the blank ones, okay, just on the blank ones. If you're using my design, the good morning, you just keep on going. But if you are using one of the blanks, after you have finished color stop number three, you are going to stop and you're going to put plus or minus. You can see that plus or minus key, and I'm going, and remember on this machine, it's backwards. I keep wanting to do that as plus, but look, it goes backwards. I want it to go forward, crisscross, okay? And I don't want, I'm going to skip to the end. Now I've got the beginning of my design. So I'm going to change colors again, and I think I'll use, I don't know, let's, I'll use the same blue so I don't have to change it. Now when I'm doing monograms, I will slow my machine down to about 600 and you just get a better stitch out at 600 stitches per minute than you do the bigger one and that's just a matter of taste okay so I'm going to stitch now to the end of the design then have to come back okay so it's going to do that F and it's going to stop because because I had to break up the letters this now shows up it's, oh, sorry as three different colors. If I had left it as one row, then you would just continue on and, and stitch. So now it would just do them all in one shot. But no, we divided them, so now it divides up to three. It says black, but I'm going to put whatever color I like in there. So 
so it's and I think I do have it slowed down it's not going real fast I might just put the F because you don't want to see me stitch out all this mess I'll let it just just do the F Okay, I'm not going to continue on. Let's just say I had come all the way to the end. And it had given me, let's go plus or minus. Okay, now I'm back at the beginning. Color stop number one. I need to come back to that color stop number four. So I'm going to advance again to color stop number four where I left off. Left off with the stippling. So I left off, I did three. Then, so now I need to do four which is my tack down of the back fabric. So what I want to do is this. I'll back up some. I'm going to take the fabric out. I mean, they take the hoop off the machine and turn this over. Okay, and then here's the pins. I'm going to, and I'm just going to pin this temporarily right here. I'm going to turn it over. I don't want the pins anywhere in this sewing area, and I usually will put more pins. Take it out of the bottom. I want to keep an eye on those pins. I don't want those pins anywhere or they can get into trouble. This will seriously tear up your machine. You can tape it. I find I have problems with tape a lot of times. And the problems with the tape is it lets loose and it gets stuck to the bed of the machine, curls under, and then you got a mess. So tape gets on my nerves. I will use it occasionally, but not a lot. Okay. And we put this back into the machine. Oh, wait a minute. Outer boundary. So I want to change this bobbin out to I have wound a bobbin with the same that I'm using up top. let it stitch and it's going to tack down the outside and it's also going to give me the placement of that buttonhole close <laughs> I was close <laughs> sure that gets there we go and I have it double stitched down Now, now we're ready to trim the fabric away from both the front and the back. Got where I didn't get it very good. So if you back some, and get this hoop out. If you put your finger underneath of it, you can, if you put your finger underneath of it and raise it up some, you can get closer. Okay, and I'm just going to trim. This doesn't have to be super close. You don't want to cut stabilizer that would be a big no-no however if you do cut your stabilizer it is no big deal you can and I think I did cut it no I didn't 
if you did cut it just keep on keep going however just take a, another scrap piece of this and just tape it to the back or you know use that kk2000 and just put stick it to the back so it, so the threads have something to grab and same thing over here i'm going to be cutting the fabric out of the buttonhole and i want to be careful just to not to get if you can not to get the uh stabilizer if you have scissors with a sharp point that should be a real help for me <laughs> okay and now since now I've got the blue in the bottom and blue in the top and it will do the last stitch here and which is just simply there we go okay and we'll let it stitch up while we wrap up okay Yes, I do nurse it along, and when you're nursing, uh, yes, Mary, I do. I'm very, I try to be real careful to to uh, keep things nice and smooth. Although, be very careful when you are nursing these things through, because of what happens is you can get your fingers ma uh, caught, and we all know I have had stitched two hours of surgery on this finger alone because it got hit by a needle. <laughs> that was a 10 needle machine that got me though. Those things are really vicious. Okay, let's see. Yeah, June says her tape always gets wadded up under the hoop and, uh, but yes, you wanna use, uh, I use pins more than anything else, but you have to be very, very careful. Um, you might even wanna run a trial to make sure you don't run into them. And if I have pins, I don't leave it. Do not leave your, your um, your embroidery if you have pins anywhere near the thing because that could be a disaster okay and it's just going to stitch that that's like watching the grass grow <laughs> Oh, it's still going to sew for all. I'm just going to let that go. Now, oh, let me talk about one thing before I let you guys go. So what you would do when this is done is I would cut around here. And then you take a Q-tip and you just run it along the edge like this. You'll run a Q-tip with dipped in water right here. And that melts the edges of that stabilizer. And so that it looks nice and clean on the edge. And then it'll be done. There's its twin. <laughs> There's its twin right there. So uh, let's see. I'm going to turn that's too loud. I'll just turn it off. I'll finish it later. So anyway, any questions? Okay, we'll see you. Bye. <laughs>